Brought to you in part by Susan Shoot at Exclusive Realtors, servicing South Chicagoland, Northwest Suburbs, Kankakee, and Will County. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be doing the uh, boat again today, and I'm going to be putting in a uh, 1520 um, Solus Impeller. Um, I have a 1419 right now, and with the power it's putting out, it can do it can handle a little more. And uh, I'm not really worried about it uh, as far as pulling acceleration or anything. I just uh, I'm not worried about that because I'm not not like I'm racing this boat or anything like that. But uh, I want to try it out. I think it can handle it. So here we go. So back here, first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the controls. So this is for the reverse bucket here, and there's a 10 millimeter uh, lock nut here, and there is this thing here. I already kind of loosened it. This cotter pin. And then there is this piece that just holds it down on top. And now that's that's going to be free. So when I take this off here, um, this can just lift up out of the way. And then all that holds this whole setup on is these four Allens. There's two here and two on the bottom. And then I have to take off that uh, steering bolt right there. So I have this free, I got this free here, I'm just putting the uh, nut back on with the bolt so I don't lose it. There is a washer, a little flat washer that's going to go on the top when we're done. So it looks like now I'm just going to pull out these four Allens. There's two on top, two on the bottom. So now I got all four bolts out. This is loose whole thing comes off in one piece and now all that's left is the actual pump <clears throat> it actually comes off in two pieces but they bolt on together so so yeah we're gonna get this pump out of there and we're gonna see uh, what it's gonna look like. So I got the four bolts out of the pump. This will just slide out. And that's it. Nothing to it. So it's supposed to be a number or a 12 Allen, but a T60 also will work. I already broke it loose. <clears throat> I can just spin it. do now is there's the tool that holds on the splines there's a switch this out with the uh, and this still looks brand new practically this has been on there for probably five years so I'm gonna get the 1520 all right now I got the other one and I'm gonna get it in the pump first That's pretty good on the, the um, wavering that's already in there, so I'm going to leave it because I don't want to fight putting in a new one when this one's still okay. I have this set at the right torque spec. I'm just going to and now I'll just have to put some grease up in here and get it back together. So I've got some grease on there. There was a lot of grease inside of the cone. Um, still I got blue Loctite on these bolts 
And these weren't crazy tight either. Now I got everything back together as far as the tightening and I tightened this down and put a little bit of Loctite on it. The last one spun loose on me, so it didn't do anything, but it was not on there. It was unthreaded, so I tightened it. I know a lot tighter than I did the last one <clears throat> and uh, put Loctite on it, so it should be good now. Um, these two O-rings are on the pump still. This one's pretty good stuck here, so I'm gonna leave it like that. I just gotta put the big black O-ring on here, and then I can slide it back on. Okay, I literally just got the pump slid back in, and all I have to do is put the four bolts in. It did engage in the splines, obviously, or else it wouldn't go. I did put some actual tire lube on the O-ring, the big black O-ring that goes around up front. Now I hear the best way to line yourself up put two bolts in this thing so that you can try to hold it together so you can get it up in here. We're not trying to line up two things at the same time. bottom one. They're stuck. Yeah. So it's best to get the bottom ones in first. All right. So I got the bucket control. Right. Very last thing. Don't forget to put that little cap on to hold the uh, cable down in there. But that's it. It's good to go. Um, I'll probably start it up tomorrow, but I don't anticipate any problems. Everything was pretty, pretty decent. So that's it for the impeller change out. In my case, it went pretty smooth just because my, um, wear ring was still pretty good shape. So, cause when I put the new one in there, there was, there's no, uh, I don't go in uh, seaweed or places where I pick up a bunch of rocks. I don't go in shallow stuff, so it's pretty smooth running through there. Um, so my wear ring is in good shape and the clearance was still tight, so I'm not really worried about that. Otherwise, I would have just changed out the uh, wear ring. But that being said, everything went together smooth. Uh, I anticipate a little bit uh, lower RPM, a little more speed. Uh, we'll see what it does, but uh, the the engine seems to put out more than enough for the impeller that was in it before, so I figured this should help on the top end on a nice smooth flat day. I really uh, look forward to putting the inner cooler on and picking up some power that way and maybe, you know, get this thing up to 
55. Right now it does about 50. So we'll see between those two things. But uh, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.